This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. On today's episode, we'll be talking about the conclusion to the Toolbox Killers case. We'll talk about how Lawrence Bittaker and Roy Norris were caught, who snitched on who, and everything that went down at the trial and in prison. If you haven't watched part one, we highly suggest you go back and watch that first. We'll have it linked in the description, but we'll play the wheel of death with a lucky contestant and talk about so much more on this episode of two murder morons. What's going on, everybody? Oh, man. What? <laughs> mm, something about came out of there. You are right over there? I had some spittles pop out. Oh, good Lord. Jesus. <laughs> well, hello and welcome to the show and Two Murder Morons. Well, that is the name of the show. It is. Welcome. Yep. Welcome. welcome. My name is Andy. Sitting across from me, as always, is my good buddy, Mike. That's me. <laughs> what? What's up? Oh, how much, man? How what? much? What's up? <laughs> Nothing. How's, how's your... Uh, how's, uh, how's your... The week been since I saw you last. Oh man, it's been boring. Boring. It's yeah. been a boring week. This is the highlight of my week every week. Yep, I, and I, I get just, it. I wait for Wednesday night, man. Well, we could do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You name it. We could, but then I think we'd get so far ahead of ourselves, probably, that we'd be like, God, what episode? We'd, we'd be doing like the same one again, right? You know, <laughs> right? Or my concern is, is we'll get someone that's awesome and like signs up to be a buy me a coffee member, and we're like. Hey, uh, we'll start putting your name uh, yeah. February of 2025. Your name's to start appearing. That's yeah. how far ahead we are. Yeah. Oh, well. oh, man. Yeah, it's all right. As long as we don't do the same story twice. That's that's true. Well, we do have a special announcement today. We do? We do. Holy cow. What's the announcement? Our season two finale Uh-oh. is going to be our first ever live. God, I don't look like I'm taking a shit in that picture. Do you? <laughs> do you? Yeah, I look like I'm oh, yeah. really concentrating on something. Yeah. It, it looks like you're trying to push something out. Definitely. It does. It does. <laughs> so if you enjoy watching us, this is probably going to be a shit show because we've never attempted never, a live stream before. Never been alive. But uh, September 18th, 7 p.m. Eastern, the normal time and place for the show. That's a Wednesday night. Uh, join us for the season two finale. We're going to attempt attempt the live stream. Attempt the live stream, yeah. We'll, we'll try and play the Wheel of Death. Uh, no editing, nothing. No, We're I know. Going live. That's, that is the scary part. No makeup, nothing. No. <laughs> Because we normally have makeup on. Well, I'm just saying. I didn't know how well you edited us. In there. <laughs> using, I'm using all those TikTok filters. Yeah, yeah. Mike just, and I are actually 97 years old. Yeah, yeah. Bald. <laughs> right. I don't really have a beard. Right. It's all fake. I got a comb over. We're actually women. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Oh, man. But yes, please join us. We're excited. Yeah, be fun. Nervous and excited. Uh, but like I said, September 18th, mark those calendars. Do it. Yeah. Put on your phone, whatever you got to do. Um, real quick, before we jump into this, Uh-oh. this is uh, not to turn anybody away, but this is part two of a story, uh, probably the sickest, most twisted story I think we've ever done. This one probably is up there, yeah. I mean, the crimes that these two guys commit are yeah. horrifying. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. At least they. I'm, I'm glad they got caught when they did because they could have really. Uh, oh yeah, they were picking up steam, and I think they just would have kept going yep. and going and going. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you want to see part one, I'll link that at the kind of at the top of the description, so you can uh, click that now if you want to go back. We talk about who these toolbox killers are, how they met. We talk about their despicable crimes, and today's kind of part two, so we're going to get into uh, in the Mac van. Yes, in the Mac in the Mac van. Yeah, these guys are. Yeah, they're uh, tools. They look like yeah. tools. <laughs> that's not. You know, that's funny. That's not why they're called the toolbox. No, it's not. But, but they are but tools. They, but they do look like tools. Hundred yeah. percent. Especially uh, old Norris there. I mean, he's got. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they're definitely. They are different individuals. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. And quite frankly, I'll say it. They're assholes. 
Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we get started, so I don't end up on the error board again. Oh, here we go. A little disclaimer. Oh, wow. If you're uh, listening to our show right now yeah. on one of the podcast platforms, uh, we are primarily a video podcast. So if you're wondering why we start talking like we just did about pictures and looking at things, uh, you can watch the show, YouTube or Spotify. And likewise, if you'd rather listen, which is cool too, mm-hmm. all the major podcast platforms. Or you listen to us, and then when you get home, you can watch us. Yeah, I don't know if anybody. I can't even watch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm guaranteed there's somebody other that could do it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Would they want to? I don't know. But there's somebody other that could do it if they wanted to. Or I could see listening primarily because yeah. you, you know driving to and from work or whatever. But then like an episode you're really into, being like, okay, I gotta see yeah, what gotta they're see talking what the about. Looking at go back and yeah. watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Now's a good time. Also, please uh, like, subscribe. Click the notification bell here on YouTube so that you uh, get notified when our new episodes come out. We would really appreciate that. And give us five stars on your uh, on uh, iTunes and uh, Spotify. Yeah, since they don't do the, they're a little different on theirs. Yeah, they are. We do rate. We do rate five stars. I mean, you could give us four, but we rate five. But we definitely don't rate a one. I'm sure somebody's going to rate us a one. Well, but we do get a lot of thumbs down on YouTube. Yeah, that's YouTube. We're not everybody's slice of pie, you know. I know. I, I get know. it. I get it. But it's that whole thing we always talk about. Yeah. You know, I don't like true crime podcasts. Thumbs down, negative comment. I'm like, why'd you click on a true? Yeah. Why are they being trying to be funny? They're not comedians. Right. Well, we're not. We're not. I'm just a smart ass at heart. I mean, we think we're freaking hysterical. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm just a smart ass though. So most people would say that's true. That's yeah. I'd have to agree. Yeah, yeah, but not on the show, Matt. Mm. Okay, mm. Oh, really? Wow, that came mm. out of nowhere. <laughs> mm. All right, what do you say? You ready to get with this going? Let's get it done, dude. All, All right, righty. part two, part de, part de. Okay, well, let's pick up where we are left off here. It's on me, guys. So in ni- November of 1979, Norris became reacquainted with a friend named Joseph Jackson. Joseph Jackson. Joseph Jackson. Yep. An individual with whom he had previously been incarcerated at the California Men's Colony. Okay. So this is a yeah, it's, you know, inmate buddy. Inmate buddy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the only kind of friends I think this guy has. Right. Uh, Norris confided in Jackson regarding his and Bittaker's exploits over the uh, previous five months, including graphic details of the murder of Shirley Ledford, the only victim whose body had been found at this time. Okay. Um. Norris also divulged to Jackson that in addition to the five murders he and Bittaker had committed, there had been three additional incidents in which uh, he and uh, Bittaker had abducted or attempted to abduct young women who had either escaped their attackers or, in one instance, had actually been raped but released. Okay, so he's spilling the tea to this yeah, guy. Yeah, And they all do this. They do he's, this all the time. Yeah. So he, he finds this buddy that he was in prison with, and he decides he's going to brag about yeah. everything they've done. It's like, I mean, it's like all these other guys, you know, they go to jail. First thing they do, I mean, within like a week, they tell their roommate what they did, cellmate, and their cellmate flips them. Yeah, starts singing like a bird. Jesus, man. What they're not thinking is that cellmate has some, you know, yeah. they see it as a way out. Well, exactly. Hey, I could give up some info here and maybe get a lighter sentence or Darn something. Right, yeah. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Upon hearing uh, Norris's confessions, uh, Jackson consulted his attorney <laughs> who advised him to inform authorities. Jackson agreed, and he and his attorney informed the Los Angeles Police Department. Oh, yes. Who, in turn, relayed the two men to the Hermosa Beach Police. A Hermosa Beach detective named Paul Bynum was assigned to investigate Jackson's claims as to Norris's confessions of the murders, attempted abductions, and rapes that he had confided to Jackson had occurred between June and October. Um, Bynum initially noted that Jackson's statements as to Norris's confessions did, did match reports on file of several teenage girls. Uh, who had been uh, reported missing over the previous five months. In addition, the incident Norris had confided to Jackson where he claimed he and Bittaker had sprayed mace in the face of a woman who had been then dragged into Bittaker's GMC van and raped by both men. Master report in relation to uh, an incident that occurred on September 30th. Okay, so basically Hermosa Beach Police, Mm -hmm. they've got all these crimes, all these reports of these yeah, and they're kind of like they're kind of like coming like, hey, this kind of matches what these guys are saying. Right. Jackson comes forward and he's like, well, this is interesting because this kind of matches all these like unsolved things we got going on yeah. right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of a coincidence. Yeah, 
Uh, in this filed report, a young woman named Robin Ro Robeck had been sprayed in her face with mace before being dragged into a van and raped by two Caucasian men in their mid-30s before being released. Although uh, Robeck had reported the abduction and rape to police, they had been unable to identify her assailants. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Well, now they've been identified. They've been identified. Uh, Bynum uh, dispatched an inv investigator to visit Robeck at her residence in Oregon to show her a series of mugshots. Without hesitation, Robeck positively identified two photos presented to her as those of the men who had kidnapped and raped her on September 30th. And the two individuals were identified as these two on your screen right now. Vitaker and Norse. These two ass hats. Yep. <clears throat> Dumb asses. Jesus. Oh. <sighs> so, uh, upon linking Bittaker and Norris to the rape of Robin Robeck, the Hermosa Beach uh, Police Department placed Norris under surveillance uh, within days. Uh, they had observed his dealing in marijuana. On November 12, November 20, 1979, Norris was arrested by Hermosa Beach Police for a parole violation. Mm-hmm. They get you every time with those parole violations, yep. don't they? Yep. Uh, the same day at the Burbank Motel where he resided, Bittaker was arrested for the rape of Robert Robeck. So they, that's quick. They got him pretty quick. Yeah. Um, mug shots uh, of Bittaker uh, were taken shortly after their November 1979 arrest. And although Robeck had identified mug shots of uh, Bittaker and Norris, she was unable to positively, positively identify her assailants in a police lineup. Uh, okay, so she could identify the photos, photos, but when they did a lineup with people that looked like them, yeah. she couldn't really pick them out. Well, probably with them, I mean, they probably look a little different than they did the day that, you know. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, police had observed um, Norris dealing in marijuana, whereas Bittaker had been in possession of drugs at the time of his arrest, and both were held on charges of parole violation. So yeah. oh, they yeah. still hold them. Yeah, they're hit. Yeah. Even though she couldn't. Yeah. Here's the lineup. They got the drug charges. Yeah. And plus, they got them on. She's got the photos. She did, you know, she did see them, recognize them in their photos. Um, a search of Bittaker's apartment revealed several Polaroid photographs, which were determined as depicting Hall and Gilliam, both of whom had been reported as missing earlier the same year. Uh, inside Bittaker's van, investigators discovered a sledgehammer, a plastic bag filled with lead weights, a book detailing how to locate police radio frequencies, a jar of Vaseline, two necklaces later confirmed as belonging to two of the, of the victims, and a tape recording of a young woman in obvious distress, screaming and repeatedly pleading for mercy while being tortured and sexually abused. Oh, God. And that's the one they played in court. Yeah. Um, I mean, talk about a treasure trove of evidence, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're the detective on this, you're like, bingo. Bingo. Done deal. Got, got a rape kit back here and everything. Yeah. Uh, the mother of Ledford, named by Jackson as being one of the girls whom Norris had confessed he and Bittaker had killed, identified the voice on the tape as being that of her only daughter. Okay. Um, the That's voice, the voice, sad. yeah, it is. The voices of the two men mocking and threatening Ledford in the process of her torture and abuse were identified as being Roy, Roy Norris and Lawrence Bittaker. Also found in Bittaker's motel were seven bottles of various acidic materials. Investigators would later discover Bittaker planned to use these acidic materials, acidic materials upon their next victim. Oh man, they were going to pour acid on a girl. Yeah. Ooh. Inside Norris's apartment, police discovered a bracelet he had taken from Ledford's body as a souvenir. Okay. Also found at the homes of uh, both Bittaker and Norris were Polaroid pictures of almost 500 teenage girls and young women most of which had apparently been taken at Redondo Beach and Hermosa, Hermosa Beach, mm -hmm. with others taken by Bittaker at a Burbank high school. Um, but most of these pictures had been taken without the girl's knowledge or consent. Oh, God, how creepy. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. You know, these guys, I mean, I mean these guys were well in the way to be serial killers. I mean, they're keeping stuff. Oh, yeah. They got their mementos. The, all the hallmarks yeah, are there. It, yeah, a tape recording of, of one of their killings. Yeah, they're just on their way there. Um, on uh, November 30th, 1979, Norris attended a preliminary hearing in relation to the September 30th rape. By this stage, Norris was beginning to display visible signs of stress. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder why. Uh, at the hearing, Norris waived his Miranda rights before Detective Bynum and Deputy District Attorney Stephen Kay began questioning him. Initially, in relation to the rape of Robin Robeck, 
Uh, then in relation to the, to the statements given to police by Joseph Jackson and the evidence recovered from his and Bideker's residences. Initially, Norris finally denied any involvement in any murders, rapes, or disappearances. However, when confronted with the evidence investigators had compiled, Norris began to confess, although he did attempt to portray Bideker as being more culpable in the uh, murders than himself. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah, going to yeah. do the whole... Oh, yeah, he did more than I did. Oh, yeah, my buddy. It was all my buddy. He just kind of made me... Yeah, I just I was just there to watch. Yeah, he did all the work. Oh yeah, it's the way it works, man. Yeah, it's the way it works. Uh, and what Bynum and uh, Kay later described as a casual, unconcerned matter, uh, Norris divulged that he and Bittaker had been in the habit of driving around areas such as uh, the PCH, which is Pacific Coast Highway, and randomly approaching girls whom they found attractive with offers of a ride, posing with a pair of. Uh, uh, posing with a pair or uh, for photographs, like they yep. get out and ask for photo. Yeah, weird. Uh, yeah, weird. Or uh, and do or you know trying to give them marijuana. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, I just want to go for a ride. I got some dope. Yeah, uh, a typical weekend for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the seventies. Right. You know, right. That's what they did back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to imagine. Like, can you imagine us riding around like a beach area where there's girls like. In bathing suits and pulling up and being like, take a picture with us? Take a picture with us? We'll take a picture of us and our dog? Right, yeah. <laughs> They'd be uh, like, oh my God. Creepers. They'd be on their phone already texting, calling 911. Yep. <sighs> uh, most of those whom they approached rejected whatever uh, given a ruse Bittaker and Norris used to entice them into the van. Although four girls had accepted uh, lifts from the pair and had been murdered, with the fifth victim, uh, their first being grabbed by force. Yeah. You know, back then, everybody hitchhiked. Right. So it was nothing. You know, That's like, true. You know. I didn't think about that, yeah. But why would you get in a van with two guys? Uh, mm. I, just, I just don't get that. I mean. Well, like you said, I think that was a lot more common back then. I don't think they could, I don't think they would have been very successful in today's times. No. Rolling no. around. Picking up, you know, doing this whole take a picture with a smoke some weed thing. I don't think that would work very well. Probably not. No. Probably not. Did we show a picture of the van? Have we ever showed a picture of that van? Oh, yeah. We oh, got okay. more, too, right here. Yeah, yeah. Right here. Um, There's a rear view. There's a rear view of the uh, van. Uh, inside the van, the girls would typically be uh, overpowered, bound hand and foot, Gagged and driven to locations deep within the San Gabriel Mountains. That seems to be their, their point. Their, that was their place to go. Yeah. Well, remember they had the gate. Yeah. That they had put their own their own padlock on. That's right. So they could have access and keep others out. And it mm-hmm. was like their little their stomping little, grounds area. Yeah. Uh, where they would be uh, sexually assaulted by both men. Then usually kidna- killed by strangulation with a wire coat hanger. Although two of the victims had... Uh, had ice picks driven into their ears before being strangled. God, man, that's mm. new level of sick. Yeah. 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 Uh, Norris admitted, admitted to bludgeoning their youngest victim, uh, Lamp, about the head with a sledgehammer as Bittaker strangled her and admitted to repeatedly striking uh, striking Shirley Ledford upon the elbow with a sledgehammer before strangling her to death. So mm-hmm. they kept hitting her elbow, man, banging it and banging it. Oh, yeah. God, the pain. Can't mm. imagine. I mean, the first strike. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's horrifying enough. But then, like, once you have a bone that's broken, broken, having that Continuous. hit repeatedly, yeah. no. No, thank you. Mm. And then the bottle of acid found at uh, Bittaker's motel, Norris stated, were intended for use upon the next victim they abducted. And the acts of t- uh, torture and humilia- hum- humiliation had been committed against their victims for fun. God. Sick. Yeah. Sick. This is sick stuff. Mm -hmm. And beyond the normal serial killer sick. Oh, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, see, a lot of most serial killers don't play with them. They pretty much kill them and they do their thing with them. Right. So, these guys. Whole nother level. Yeah. Yeah. According to Norris, uh, the level of brutality Bittaker uh, had exhibited toward their victims had increased on each successive instance they had uh, lured a girl into the van. Their final victim, uh, which was Ledford, had actually pleaded to be killed in order that her agony could cease. 
So she wagged her. I mean, she knew she didn't be killed. Yeah. But she's backing up to just go and get it over just with now. Get, just yeah. kill me now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this now still is Norris claiming Bittaker mm -hmm. is getting worse and worse each time, and he's the aggressor. And yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, additional details by Norris provided uh, further corroborating evidence to support his confessions. For example, he knew that uh, their first victim, Schaefer, had left a meeting at a Presbyterian church shortly before she was abducted and that uh, Schaefer had lost one shoe as she had been dragged into Bittaker's van. Uh, Norris also knew of a uh, new part of Shirley Ledford's ancestry was Hispanic and that Bittaker had unsuccessfully asked her to date him prior to October 1979. Okay. Is this the one that worked at the McDonald's? Yeah. I think. Yeah. And he always go in there and mess with her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a press statement uh, relating to the, to the police investigation into the murders issued on February 7th, 1980, Los Angeles County Sheriff Peter Pitches uh, stated the victims had been subjected to sadistic and barbaric abuse, adding that five charges of first degree murder would be sought against uh, both Bittaker and Norris. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sheriff Pitches also uh, stated that in relation to the Polaroid pictures found in Bittaker and Norris's apartments, police had uh, located 60 of the young women depicted, none of whom had been harmed. Okay. So they found, they just went around looking for these girls to make sure they were probably still alive. Yeah. Or if they were going to be a victim. Uh, nonetheless, Pitches also stated the police had uh, identified 19 of the women depicted in the pictures as being individuals who had been reported missing, and uh, that these teenage girls and young women may have w may well have been murdered. So they're missing. They just don't know the ins you know yeah. the outcome of it yet. Um, although uh, Pitches had did stress they had uh, no conclusive evidence to suggest that these additional 19 women photographed had fallen victim to Bittaker and Norris. So. But. Yeah. It's kind of like chances are. Yeah. I, I think if they went know. to the San Gabriel Mountains, they might find a lot of these. Right. I have a feeling. Uh, one of the Polaroid pictures seized from Bittaker and Norris depicts an unidentified young white woman alone with Bittaker and Norris in circumstances very similar uh, to the pictures found depicting known victims, uh, Hall, Lamp, and Gillum. Mm -hmm. The young women in the in the pictures never have have never been identified. Uh, the photograph this photograph is indicative indicative. I'm sorry, this photograph is indicative there may have been one further victim whom Bittaker Norris uh, ne ever mentioned to investigators. So, so now uh, got them both in custody. Now we're going to do. There's a search. Okay. So we're going to search the Gabriel Mountains. Oh yeah. Uh, the, San, the San Gabriel Mountains uh, was uh, Bittaker and Norris murdered and discarded the bodies of the four of their victims at this location. Uh, Norris led investigators to the bodies of two of the four victims. He and Bittaker murdered at this location. <clears throat> Norris agreed to return to the San Gabriel Mountains to search for the bodies of the girls to whose abduction and murder he had confessed to assisting in. So Norris is trying to be Mr. Helpful right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, right now, yeah. He's trying to dig himself out of this. Oh, yeah. And put it all on Bittaker. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in each instance, uh, Norris brought detectives to the area where he and Bittaker had disposed of their victims' bodies, despite extensive searches of the areas where he stated the bodies of uh, Schaefer and Hall had been discarded, their bodies were never found. On February 9th, 1980, the skeletalized bodies of Lamp and Gillum were found at the bottom of a canyon alongside a dry riverbed. Yep. Uh, the bodies were scattered over an area measuring hundreds of feet in diameter. An ice pick was still lodged in the skull of Gillum. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Oof. The skull of Lamp bore uh, multiple indentations, evidence of the numerous hammer blows uh, Norris had stated he inflicted upon her. Uh, in February of 1980, uh, Norris and Bittaker were formally charged with the murders of the five girls. And at their arraignment, Bittaker had denied bail, whereas Norris's bail was set at $10,000. Okay. Yeah. Within one month of his being charged with murder, Norris had accepted a plea bargain in which he would testify against Bittaker in return for the prosecution agreeing not to seek the death penalty against him. Somebody snitching. Yep. Yep. I mean, smart man. 
True. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I love you, Mike. But if we ever did some crazy shit like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're going down. I'm going to sing like a bird. Yeah. It was yeah. all Mike. Yeah, I'm taking the plea. <laughs> no, I'm taking the plea. I'm taking it the moment they put handcuffs on me. Right. Yep. I, I, I got the info. They want it. <laughs> guilty plea. On March 18th, 1980, Norris pleaded guilty to four counts of first-degree murder, one count of second-degree murder in relation to the victim hall, two counts of rape, and one count of robbery. Uh, formal sentencing was postponed until May 7th. In return for Norris's agreeing to plead guilty and testify against Bideker, prosecutors had agreed to seek neither the death penalty nor life without parole at the upcoming sentencing hearing. Okay, so that's the deal he got. That's his deal, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, prior, to, prior to his May 7th uh, sentencing, Norris was reviewed by a probation officer who testified that his sentencing, at his sentencing, that Norris had been had again uh, accused Bideker of the actual torture of their victims, and that for Norris himself, the feeling of power and the dominance he had over the victims was the main overriding factor, as opposed to having sexual intercourse with them. Okay, so he was more into the violence. Yes, the actual yeah, that torture. Was, that was portion. his thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the probation officer added that Norris never exhibited any remorse or compassion about his brutal acts toward the victims. Uh, the defendant appears compulsive in his, in his need to inflict pain and torture upon women. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the probation officer testified that Norris can realistically be regarded as an extreme sociopath whose, whose depraved pattern of behavior is beyond rehabilitation. Oh, yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah. I you think? think? Yeah, I think both of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on May 7, 1980, Norris was sentenced to 45 years to, to life imprisonment with uh, eligibility for parole uh, in, in 2010. On April 24, 1980, Bittaker was arraigned on 29 charges of kidnapping, rape, sodomy, and murder, in addition to various charges of criminal conspiracy and possession of a firearm. He was also charged with two counts of uh, conspiracy to commit murder dating from December 1979, in which he had uh, unsuccessfully attempted to persuade two in two inmates due to be released to murder Robin Ro Robeck in order to prevent her from testifying against him at his upcoming trial. Oh, damn. So he's in this game of let's get, yeah, rid, of yeah, let's get rid of witnesses. He's like doing, he's almost turned into like mob type shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, the charges for the rape of Robin Robeck would later be dropped because of lack of physical evidence, as well as Robeck's failing to identify her attackers in the lineup. Yeah, I had, a, I had a feeling that would come back to haunt us yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. When asked by Judge uh, William Hollingsworth as to how he pleaded, uh, Bittaker remained silent, refusing to answer any questions. In response, the judge entered a plea of not guilty on his behalf. Um. Bittaker's trial began on January 19, 1981. He was tried in he was tried in Tor in Torrance, California, before Judge Thomas Fredericks. Uh, the star witness to appear for the prosecution at the trial was of Bittaker was, of course, Norris, um, who had begun his testimony on January 22nd. Norris testified as to how he became acquainted with Bittaker in jail, and how the pair had formulated a plan to kidnap, rape, and kill teenage girls. Uh, responding to questions from the prosecutor, Norris stated that in June 1979, he had unsuccessfully attempted to abduct and rape a woman who escaped unharmed. Uh, when he informed Whitaker of, his, of this incident, they both agreed to act together on all future abductions. I guess, you know, one person is not enough. You need both. Yeah. Uh, Norris then chronologically recounted for the court the details of each of the five murders he and Bittaker had committed, in addition to the September 30th, uh, 1979 rape of Robeck, uh, the attempted abduction of a woman named Jan Malin, uh, which had also um, occurred on September 30th, uh, and the attempted abduction of an unidentified young woman on September 27th. So in reference to the actual murders, Norris stated that he, that after he unsuccessfully attempted to strangle Schaefer, Bittaker had strangled her with a wire coat hanger. Uh, the pair had thrown her, her body into a location at or near the San Dimas Canyon 
And in reference to the murder of Hall, Norris stated that he had been told by Bittaker to drive to a nearby store to purchase alcohol uh, when Hall was murdered, after which he returned to find Bittaker smiling and holding a Polaroid, Polaroid pictures he had taken of Hall after informing her he intended to kill her. Mm. So he took pictures of her reactions. Uh, with reference to victims Lamp and Gilliam, Nor stated that the two girls were held captive for over a day before being murdered, adding that Bittaker had killed Gilliam before he himself bludgeoned Lamp about the head as Bittaker strangles her. Um, when discussing the abuse and torture of Ledford, Nor stated uh, that stated he had, upon the uh, insistence of Bittaker, committed the actual murder of Ledford. Adding Bittaker had informed him that I should kill her because I hadn't killed anyone yet. Okay, so he, so he's kind of coming clean, yeah, about what he did. But every time he admits to doing something bad, it's well, it's because he told me to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Like he's overpowered. Like he's afraid of the guy or something. Right. Overpowering him. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I knew this was a coming, so I agreed. Norris then confessed to having killed Ledford by strangling her with a with a coat hanger, which he had tightened with pliers and in much the same manner Bittaker had with previous victims, Schaefer and Lamp. Um, Norris then stated the pair had driven to Sunland, uh, where he discarded uh, Shirley Ledford's body upon the front lawn as Bittaker waited in his van. They just threw her out in somebody's yard. Right. Yeah. Well, they wanted the media attention. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to see what it would look like to be oh, the news. Course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, several witnesses testified as to Bittaker having shown them pictures of the victims he had retained as keepsakes and which he had been which had been found in his motel. Uh, one witness, a 17-year-old neighbor of Bittaker's named Christina Drail, testified that Bittaker had shown her a Polaroid picture he had taken of Gillum before stating, the girls I get won't talk the girls I get won't talk anymore. It's pretty ominous. Yeah. I Jarell. mean, kind of a dick thing to say, too. Yeah. Jarrell also stated Bittaker had once played a cassette tape to her in which she heard two girls screaming and Bittaker laughing. Sadistic. Mm-hmm. Another witness to testify was Lloyd Douglas, who had shared a jail cell with Bittaker following his November 1979 arrest. Another inmate. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Douglas testified that Bittaker had discussed in detail the torture he had inflicted um, on victims Gillum and Ledford, stating uh, Bittaker had informed him he had stabbed one of the gr one of uh, Gillum's breasts with an ice pick, which he then twisted as the tool remained inserted inserted in the wound. Uh, he had also pinched Gillum on the legs and breasts with a vice grip. God, before tearing off part of one nipple. Ooh, mm -hmm. God, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. God. Douglas also stated Bittaker had informed him uh, he had pulled on the genitals and breasts of Shirley Ledford with the same instrument and that he had attempted to beat her breasts back into her chest. What is wrong with these two? I don't know, dude. I, Most uncomfortable story we've ever done. Yeah. 100%. Uh, the defense contended that Norris was the actual perpetrator of the of the murders, and that Bl Bittaker had only become aware of Norris's activities shortly before his arrest, when Norris had informed him uh, he had murdered several several girls whom they had been uh, previously uh, encountered with sexually, uh, in which encountered and sexually assaulted. Okay, so Bittaker's whole thing is. I was no part of this. I didn't know anything about it until mere days before my arrest. And then to my surprise, yeah, I find out that my good buddy Norris has been doing all this really sick shit, but I knew nothing about it. Yeah. That's his. See, that's what makes Norris more believable because mm -hmm. he's giving details and we did this together and here's yep. the murders I did. Although he does. Yeah, he admits. He does the cowardly, like, well, because he told me to. He thing. told me to, but at least but he... this guy doing the good old, like, well, I, I don't know what's going on. Why yeah, am I, I here? Why am I here? Hmm. BS. Uh, to support their case, the defense produced uh, a uh, friend of Norris named Richard Schutman, who testified that Norris had repeatedly d uh, divulged to him his desire to rape young girls. Shootman also testified that Norris had uh, informed him that the look of shock and fear on the face of a young girl was a prime 
uh, sexual stimulus for him. Mm. Uh, in support of Bideker's case, the defense also referenced the Polaroid pi- images taken of the facial expressions of Hall and Bideker, Hall, of Hall and of Bideker's statements, sorry, uh, regarding Norris's uh, revelations to Bideker regarding the, his prime sexual stimulus Stimulations while uh, both were incarcerated at the California Men's Colony in 1977. So more jailhouse snitches. Yep. Yep. The most damning evidence presented at Bideker's trial was a 17-minute section of the audio tape the pair had created of Ledford's abuse and torment. The audio tape, which had been found inside Bideker's van uh, and which Norris had earlier testified Bideker had repeatedly played as he drove in the weeks prior to his arrest, adding that Bideker considered the contents to be real funny. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and was presented in, in evidence on January 29th with uh, Stephen K. Forwarding the jury, forewarning the jury, for those of you who do not know what hell is like, you will find out. Uh, Judge Fredericks had earlier denied motions by the defense to omit the tape regarding uh, recording from a mission as evidence. Uh, more than 100 people were present in the courtroom as the tape was played, and many members of both the jury and the audience wept openly upon hearing the contents with uh, tears from their eyes or rushing out of the courtroom before the tape had finished. Uh, Bittiger had Bittiger was undisturbed at, the, at hearing the contents of the tape, and he smiled throughout the duration of the recording. Oh, my God. And I, we just got to say, we said this on part one. You know, we chose not to play the tape. Yes. Uh, call us wusses or whatever. It's just, it's too sick. It is. If you want to hear it, there are other YouTube channels. Yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube. If you just, you know, search. Type, type her name in. Her name, it. you know, or Toolbox Killer Recording or, uh, you know, any of that stuff. You will you can find it if you really want to listen to it. But and you're, and you're not going to hear the whole thing. The only, the only thing you'll find is, like, one minute of it. Yeah. But that one minute's enough. Yeah, right? it's like, enough. Like, it is... Yeah. Horrifyingly terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in one of the instances throughout the trial, uh, when prosecutor Stephen Kay was reduced to tears, he walked out of the courtroom during recess following the hearing of the recording of Ledford's rape, abuse, and torture, weeping openly. Kay stated to the, gather, the reporters gathered outside the courtroom, everybody who has heard that tape has had it affect their lives. I pictured, I just picture those girls how alone they were when they died. When questions by reporters whether the audio tape should have been introduced into evidence, given the obvious psychological and emotional trauma caused to many in the courtroom through the contents being broadcast, Kay simply stated, you're darn right, you're darn right, uh, it should have been played. The jury needs to know what these guys did. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that tape paints a perfect picture oh, yeah. of how sadistic this stuff was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, on February 5th, 1981, Bittaker testified on his own behalf. Bittaker denied any knowledge of the abduction and murder of Schaefer and claimed he had paid Hall uh, to pose for the Polaroid photographs. Yeah. Well, look at this picture of him testifying. Yeah. With that big shit-eating grin on his oh, face yeah. like a dick. Yep. Yep. He's all happy about it. Um. The photographs he had found at his Burbank motel after Hall had agreed uh, to his offer of two hundred dollars for sex, so she, he paid her for the photographs and, and he paid her for the sex. Is what he's claiming. Yes, it's, yeah. it's almost like she was a prostitute. Yeah, yeah. He then claims uh, no, that he, he then claimed Norris had uh, walked Hall into the San Gabriel Mountains before returning alone and informing Bittaker he had told Hall to find her own way home. So he's still playing this. I had no idea all this was oh, yeah, going on. Yeah. It was all Norris doing this. Yeah. Uh, Bittaker had a similar explanation uh, for the double murder of Lamp and Gillum. He claimed uh, Gillum accepted an offer of money for sex and posing for pictures, and that he had last seen the girls alone with Norris in his GMC van. Uh, with regard to the murder of Ledford, he claimed she had agreed to theatrically scream for the tape recorder and that uh, she was not tortured in his presence, but had been left alone with Norris in his van. This guy sure has a lot of excuses to explain stuff away, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Bittaker's trial lasted for over three weeks. So, on February 9th, 1981, the prosecution and defense counsels began their closing arguments. 
In the closing argument delivered by the prosecution, Kay apologized to the jury that he was only asking for the death penalty, adding that he had wished that he had wished uh, the law permitted him to request that the same suffering be inflicted upon Bideker that he had inflicted upon his victims. Mm-hmm. Um, Kay then described uh, Bideker as an ex- as an ex- as an excuse for a man as he held aloft pictures of each of the five murdered girls before the jury. Uh, seeking the death penalty for Bideker, Kay referred to the case as one of the most shocking, brutal cases in the history of American crime, and added, make no, make, make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, a punishment of life imprisonment in prison would be a total of complete victory for him. If the death penalty is not appropriate in this case, then when will it ever be? Uh, valid point. Yeah. I agree with them. Yep. 100%. 100%. I mean, most shocking yeah. yeah, yeah, you know what, what I mean. If this doesn't work, right? If, yeah. if this isn't death penalty material here. Yeah, nothing. What is? is yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, in his own uh, closing argument before the jury, Deputy uh, District Attorney uh, C. Randolph Ramsey discredited Bittaker's claims that contrary to Norris's testimony, Shirley Lynette Ledford had agreed to be, scream, weep, and plead for mercy theatrically for the tape recording introduced as evidence, stating to the jury. You've heard the sounds of on this tape. Miss Ledford screaming, yelling, don't touch me. No, 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 no. That tape should be sufficient corroboration by itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, defense attorney Albert Garber requested the jury discount, discount the testimony of Norris, uh, arguing in favor of Bideker's claims that Norris had committed the sexual murders, or the actual murders, and claiming the testimony of the, of the prosecutors throughout the trial amounted to little more than a bloodlust, adding that the prosecution had repeatedly recited the glory, gory details uh, of the murders. So basically, they had to put it on the prosecutors. They're, you know. Oh, yeah. Portraying this as a blood, yeah. bloody issue and bringing up all this gore and horror. Well, I think that what they were saying is, you know, the prosecutors repeatedly told you about yeah. the gore of this crime to, to get your emotions fired up yep. into coming after our client. And it is always tricky. I mean, when you have a jailhouse snitch, oh, sure, yeah, or you've got a duo where one's snitching on the other, it's mm-hmm. hard. You know, how much weight do you give the testimony right. of the other one that participated? You know, how trustworthy are they? Oh yeah. So I, they're doing their job. I mean, the defense attorneys here, are, you know, they're trying every angle with this. Of course, I get yeah. it. Yeah, I hate them, but I get it. Yeah. Um, uh, Garber Hart to the uh, earlier testimony of a psychologist named Michael. Uh, Maloney, who had testified as to Bittaker's inability to emphasize with other people's feelings and emotions. In addition to the fact that, with exception of Bittaker's 1974 um, stabbing of uh, Gary Louie, all of Bittaker's previous criminal convictions, convictions were for nonviolent offenses. Uh, the I love, can I, hang on one second. I just love that he's like, well, except for that one time he stabbed a dude. Yeah. This guy is nonviolent. Oh, he's not violent. Let's forget about the stabbing. Yeah. It was a bunch of theft and shoplifting. Yeah, that was with the guy anyway. That's so all he's ever sexual. done. Yeah. I <laughs> just love the downplaying. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I know. Uh, the defense also claimed the defense also claimed that insufficient corroborative evidence existed to convict Bittaker. Well, really, really, if you think about it, I mean, what evidence? I just plain devil's advocate here. Yeah. But they basically just have Norris true saying Bittaker took part in this stuff mm-hmm. and they have an audio recording true which could be is that his voice who is you know it's a male voice whatever how do we other than that I mean what you know what I'm saying yeah oh yeah I mean you don't have DNA because that was right that was the 70s and 80s DNA, oh. DNA didn't come around until the 90s. And you have the female witness that could not identify either of them in a lineup. In a lineup. So I get them bringing up, like, where's... Yeah. Uh, you know, like... Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously he did it. Of course. I'm just saying... Oh, yeah, I get it. The defense is earning their money. Yeah. Uh, on February 17th, 1981, after deliberating for three days, the jury found Bittaker guilty of five counts of first-degree murder. Damn straight. Yep. One charge of conspiracy to commit first degree murder, five ca- five charges of kidnapping, nine charges of rape, two charges of forcible oral copulation, 
uh, one charge of sodomy, and three charges of unlawful possession of a firearm. Damn straight. Fry his ass. Yep. Uh, deliberations as to whether Bittaker should be sentenced to death or life without parole began February 19th. Kill him. Uh, the jury deliberated for just 90 minutes before they returned with their verdict. 90 minutes? Yes. This is not good news no. for Bittaker. No. <laughs> like, not at all. No. Bittaker was sentenced to death for the five counts of first-degree murder upon which the prosecution had sought, sought, uh, had sought this penalty. Hell yes. He, he showed no emotion as the verdict was uh, delivered, although he did stare at the jurors. Superior uh, Court Judge Thomas uh, Fredericks then ordered Bittaker to appear in court on March 24th for formal sentencing. On March 24th, in accordance with the jury verdict, Bittaker was formally sentenced to death in the event that the sentence was in the event that the sentence imposed was ever reverted to life imprisonment. Judge Thomas Frederick opposed an alternative sentence for 199 years uh, okay. and four, four months imprisonment to take effect, immediate effect, if he were to be downgraded to life. Gotcha. So, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's that's a good amount of time. If he does half, he's never going to get no, Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's, yeah, he's, yeah. He'll never see daylight. Yeah. Um. So now we go into like uh, imprisonment and appeals. Okay, the guy's got appeals. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh yeah. So got a uh, Bittaker appeared uh, appealed his conviction and sentencing, citing procedural errors such as the validity of warrants used to authorize the search of his van and motel room, and the uh, dismissal by the judge of a woman initially hired at the stage of the jur- of jury selection to advise the defense counsel in matters relate relating to jury views upon the death penalty. Uh, nonetheless, Bittaker's appeal was dismissed on June 22nd, 1989, with the court ruling that if any that any procedural errors were minor and in view of the strong evidence against Bittaker did not affect the overall verdict. Good. Good. Yeah. An initial uh, execution date for Bittaker was set for December 29th, 1989. Bittaker appealed the deci- this decision, although on June 11th, 1990, the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the decision that he be executed. A renewed execution date was scheduled for July 23rd, 1991. Uh, Bittaker then appealed the decision uh, of the U.S. Supreme Court that he be ex- uh, executed uh, and was granted a further stay of execution on July 9th, 1991. Okay. Uh, Bittaker granted, a set, uh, granted several death row interviews following his 1981 conviction. He never expressed any remorse for his crimes. If that doesn't tell you everything you need to know right oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Repeatedly stating uh, the only remorse he felt had been for the fact that he and Norris were arrested, thus ruining uh, his own life. Oh, my God. <laughs> Selfish dick. Yep. Uh, he corresponded with numerous individuals responding to letters he received with uh, the nickname uh, Pliers, Pliers Bittaker. He went by the nickname Pliers? Uh-huh. In reference to one of the implements he and Norris had used to torture and murder victims. What a douche. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Was, yeah. Oh, this is cool. I'm going to go by the nickname Pliers. <laughs> well, in prison, it gives him something, I guess. Uh, while incarcerated, Bittaker filed more than 40 individual lawsuits, in, uh, 40 frivolous lawsuits. <laughs> over I was going to Over issues uh, as trivial as being served a broken cookie and crushed sandwiches by the prison cafeteria. Which he, he sued over a broken cookie? Yeah. Oh, my God. Which he cited as examples of being subjected to cruel and unusual punishment. I uh, mean, to be fair, when I buy a pack of Oreos yeah. and they're crushed up a bit, Correct. I feel a little screwed. Yeah. Now, am I filing a lawsuit? No. Is that cruel and unusual? Punishment to be <laughs> yeah. Is it the fact that I buy a bag of chips and ninety percent of the bag is there? There, right. You know, let's sue Lay's. Yeah, let's sue Lay's now for not providing a, the full content. Uh, Bittaker was declared a vex, vex, uh, vex, vexatious litigant. Oh, good. Yes. In nineteen ninety three, as a result of this declaration, he was not allowed to file lawsuits without the expe- express permission of an attorney or a judge. Isn't that great? Yep. How often do you hear of that? Not often. Where someone has filed so many frivolous, stupid-ass lawsuits that they are actually banned Banned from from filing more lawsuits. Yep. 
Despite the fact Bittaker, despite the fact Bittaker considered his life to have been wasted, uh, one and claiming to wish he could go back and not do it, having hurt so many people, he also marveled that he and Norris had little in common before their acquaintance at the California Men's Colony in San Luis Obispo in 1977. Before adding that they had one hell of a month, uh, they had one hell of a lot in common now. God, this guy's an yeah, he's, ass. he's a nut, man. He's a nut. Um, when asked in 2016 if he would consider writing to the victims' families, Baker claimed he was too ashamed to even try and beg for forgiveness. The sincerity of his expressions of remorse had been disputed by numerous professionals who uh, referenced Bittaker's consistent reveling in his notoriety and who noted the fact he would tailor his outlook on his actions to one of regret to those whose attention he wished to maintain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't give a shit. No, he don't give a shit. Uh, Bittaker died while incarcerated on death row at San Quentin State Prison on December the 13th, 2019, at the age of 79. Now here's a quick, if you didn't catch it, there's the the last mugshot I could find from 2018. Yep. yep. Yeah, he looked bad. Yeah. Uh, his death was reported as being due to natural causes. Okay. Uh, Norris was incarcerated by at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility. He died of natural causes at the California Medical Facility on February 24, 2020, at the age of 72. Having been transferred to this facility one week prior to his death, in the years following Norris's conviction, he had he had repeatedly claimed the sole reason he participated in the murders was out of fear of Bittaker. Norris also claimed to have twice contemplated confessing to his and Bittaker's responsibility in the murders to the police. He also claimed he to have def- deterred the three deterred three individual three potential victims from entering Bittaker's van. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, nope. no, nope, they got turned. They may have ran away from him. No, nope. but he didn't turn them away. And he didn't contemplate. No, confessing. No, 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 no. Although Norris repeatedly admitted that he had enjo- that he enjoyed the acts of rape and the vi- with the victims, he claimed only Bittaker enjoyed the acts of torture and murder, stating, "I didn't enjoy killing." That was Lawrence Bittaker. It was his favorite part, watching the women struggle to live, knowing he'd soon be taking life away. So his thing is, I'm a proud rapist, yeah, but not a murderer. Yeah, he's a murderer. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's in that van. He's he's 100% a part of it, no matter what he says. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Both investigators and psychologists have, have stated Norris derives equ- equally extreme uh, gratification from the domination, abuse, and torture inflicted upon the victims as Bittaker. Uh, these uh, respective parties have also a heart towards Norris's extensive history of, psych- of physical and sexual violence against women prior to this meeting, before, before his meeting with Bittaker, and his uh, repeated instances of denial of culpability for his actions. Uh, Norris initially became uh, eligible for parole in 2009. Norris declined to, Norris declined to attend the parole hearing. That that tells you everything right there. He doesn't even go to his own parole here. Uh, He didn't want to hear people talk about him and shit. Right. Uh, Thereby automatically deferring his parole eligibility for another 10 years. Uh, He was denied parole again in 2019 and died while still incarcerated earlier earlier the following year. I am upset he beat the system. He died of a natural death, something that his victims didn't have a chance for. They had their whole lives ahead of them. They never got to get married, have children, or grandchildren. Uh, Stephen K. reflecting on the news of Bittaker's death uh, via natural causes in 2019. Yeah. Uh, Stephen K., the prosecutor of Bittaker's trial, still considers the murders uh, committed by Bittaker and Norris as being the worst criminal case he has ever prosecuted or encountered and remained insistent in this belief that prior to Bittaker's death via natural causes, he had been, one, he had been more deserving of being executed than any other inmate incarcerated on California's death row. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in interviews, he was stated that over over two years following the trial of Lawrence Bittaker, his sleep was disturbed by reoccurring nightmares in which he would be rushing to Bittaker's van to prevent harm coming to the girls, but would always get there too late. Paul Bynum, the chief investigator of the murders committed by Bittaker and Norris, uh, he committed suicide in December of 1987. Oh man, really? He was 39 years old. 
Oh. In a 10-page suicide note, Bynum specifically referred to the murders committed by Bittaker and Norris as haunting him and his fear uh, they may be released from prison. That's, I, Mike, that's the thing. I keep saying, like, this is truly one of the worst cases yeah, out is. there. Yeah, and especially for a cop. And this, yeah, this investigator that had to see all this and... Caught it too late. Yep. Uh, the audio cassette Bittaker and Norris created of themselves raping and torturing Ledford remains in the possession of the FBI Academy. Uh, this recording is used to train and desensitize FBI agents to the raw reality of torture and murder. Yeah, it'll do that to you. And that is the Toolbox Killers. Yeah. And and with that uh, audio recording, there's also a page. Um, you can find it on YouTube as well. Is uh, It's the uh, – they, they took a – Like a transcript a transcript of Transcript of the actual tape. And it, it, word for word of what happened. It, it's, it's, I read it. It's a lot easier to read it than it is to hear. Yeah. I still don't recommend either. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, terrible. Yeah. Unless, unless, unless you really have a, unless things don't bother you. If you've already been desensitized, yeah, yeah. maybe. But yeah. If you got a job where you're desensitized, yeah, you probably will have a problem with it. But, but I feel like you and I have been desensitized to a lot of the stuff. Oh, of course. But it still was, like I said, I couldn't. I yeah. couldn't really finish the whole recording. It's terrible. Yeah, it is. I, I listened to the whole thing. Ugh. Yeah, it was. Mm-mm. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Yeah. Well, should we lighten the mood a little bit? Yeah, let's do that. Should we uh, play the Wheel of Death? Let's do the Wheel of Death. <laughs> Mike. We're getting a lot of people signing up, buddy. I'm glad. We're time. getting a lot of people. We've got more we've got more subscribers now. I know. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. Keep keep plugging away. So, so the bucket of doom is growing. I don't know if you can hear that. I mean, there's still there's there aren't a whole there aren't a whole lot of names, but we're growing. Yeah, we're growing. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. So Mike's gonna draw a name here from the bucket of doom. If you're interested in getting your name in the bucket, play the will of death, visit our website, tumormorons.com. You'll see the sign-up form there, um, and then you'll get your name entered. Dom. Who we got tonight? Dom. Dom. All right. Well, we will get Dom on the line, yeah. and uh, we'll play the Wheel of Death. There we go. Oh! oh I heard something. There is Dom. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear Unbelievable. you. Unbelievable. Can you hear us? I absolutely can. Just sit on my cell phone, though. I don't know how to put it on the TV. Oh, that's that's all right. As long as you can hear us, okay? And can you, can you see us, too? Yeah. Okay. Well, Dom, welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome. Hey, thank you so much. So you're making some pecan brittle? I am. That sounds delicious. Yeah, it's, it's actually very popular. Mike, have you ever had pecan brittle? I have. Am I saying it right? Is it pecan or pecan? You know, it depends where you it's grew up. Fun. Yeah. Oh, it depends I grew up in Nebraska with pecans. Pecans, okay. Yeah, so I don't know. Well, welcome uh, to Two Murder changes. Morons. And uh, thanks for signing up to play the wheel. We're going to describe here the wheel because we got some new items on the wheel. Yep. Uh, nice. So we've removed two of the death spaces. Because I was hitting them too much. Yeah, Mike was hitting the death way too much. So uh, we removed two of those. There's only two death spaces left. So you only have two chances on this whole wheel here to not win something. And in their place, we've added our crime coffee or the choice of one of these uh, movie posters, the, our little mock movie posters back here. Yeah. So who do you Sounds want to have spin the wheel for you? Okay. Which one of us do you want to have spin for you? You know, um, lefty. Lefty? Me? Yeah. The man oh. on the left. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow, you are getting shot down lately, Mike. Because of you. <laughs> you, you, you screwed me a long yeah. time ago. If, if first season. You got to build up that reputation. I you got to get some winners, man. I know. Right on. All right, do you want? You want me to give like a full on just as hard as I can, or you want me kind of half spin it? Oh, be a maniac. Be a maniac. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know that's part of the choice. Yeah, maniac. Come on. Try it. Dom, um, are you hearing Mike here telling me to become a man? <laughs> be a man. Come on. He's being a jerk. Spin the, spin the wheel. Come on. Spin, okay. Forget. Here we go. You holding on? I'm going to wing it. I'm, yeah. Wow. Look at that. Okay. That was a good one. Good, good spin. Good spin. Good forces coming off that one. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, a hat. hat. Good hat. 
What's it say? Hat. Get a hat. You get one a hat like Mike's wearing. Wonderful. I like that a lot. Does that sound good? That sounds fabulous. Okay, I will be reaching out after we get done recording tonight. I'll just send you uh, an email that we've been talking through already, and I'll get your... Okay, and you send me somewhere I can send you some pecan brittle. Oh, well, oh. that sounds delicious. Okay. All right, yeah. then. All right, thank you very much for calling in. Anytime, man. I'll play oh. again, whatever. Okay, all right. All right. Have, have a good evening. Thanks, bye. 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 All right, well, again, congratulations, Dom, on your hat. Yep. Hope you enjoy that. Um, again, if you're interested, scan the QR code on your screen or head to our website to sign up to play. Yeah, we'll try to have such a, uh, well, maybe the next story we do won't be as, won't be, you know, it'll be bad, but we need to do something light again, like the killer grannies. I mean, yeah. I get that's still murder. It's not, none of this is light, but not, this is, yeah, we, this we, is heavy. We need to do something lighthearted. Yeah. I mean, this is more heavy than, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this is worse. I think this is worse than, uh, our, our buddy that had the, uh, the box. Oh, the toy box. Toy box. Yeah. yeah. Toolbox, toy box. Yeah. If you haven't watched the toy box, am I saying, I'm, saying, I'm confused myself. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't seen our episode about the toy box killer, that's from season one, right? Yeah. Go back, check that one out. That's another sick. It's a sick one, but I think this one be it. Oh, yeah. By far. Yeah. Because we really didn't, we really didn't go in depth. Well, there aren't a lot of details. Yeah, there's not a lot of details to make you. F- They're unsure because, like, really no bodies were found. Yeah, like, true. we know he murdered his victims after torturing them. Yeah. But, like, w- we're not really sure because he let some of them go. And his argument is he let them all go. But we kind of know he killed. And the reason why he got caught was because they found that tattoo on the one. And that lady's like, shit, that's my tattoo. Yeah. It's, it's, a, weird, it's a weird story. So go yeah. back and find that in season yeah. one. It's That's a good one to watch. Yeah. These, these guys are definitely... There's a movie. They did a movie on this, too. Did they really? How did I miss that? Yeah, a long time ago, probably. Oh, I'll check it out. Yeah, it was like a TV made, like for TV movie. Oh, like a lifetime murder mystery type thing? No. Like kind of be. It, it would have been like back in the day, like on Channel 8 or ABC. Oh, ABC. Was a, they, did a mo- they did a network movie about this yeah. for a, like a normal network? Yeah. I mean, they, well, they cut a lot of stuff out. Well, I know, but how do you cut all that out and not have a story still? Yeah, I know. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I think it was a network show, if I remember right. I have to look it up. Yeah. Well, if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the show, head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons. There you can simply buy Mike and I a coffee, or you can sign up to be a member for exclusive benefits such as bonus episodes. That's right, bonus. And you also got a bunch. Cool things like executive producer, get your name on the screen, screen, stuff like that. But uh, head to buymeacoffee.com or scan the QR code on your screen to learn. L- learn I always, I always learn. say learn. Yeah. Learn more about that. Yeah. As low as three bucks. As low as three bucks a month. Yeah. Three bucks a month gets you all the bonus episodes. Yep. Check yeah. it out. There's a shitload of bonus episodes. Yeah. We're, we've got quite the library going on there. Yeah, we do. So if you enjoy the show, check those out. Yep. Another thing you can do. Merch. Grab you some merch. Yep. Um, you know, support the show. You're a walking, walking billboard. billboard. for us. Love it. Yep. And you look good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Wearing our merch. Yeah. So uh, that's our website. Check out our website just in general. You can yeah. watch and listen to episodes there if you want to. And yep, check it out. At tumormorons.com. Fix that uh, at Facebook. Oh, yeah. Do not. Yeah, we need some more followers on our Facebook. Yeah, we do. And it's Instagram kinda, and kinda stuff. sad looking. But yeah, at Two Murder Morons, both Facebook, Instagram. You know. Yeah. Join join up, follow us. Yeah. Get, you, could, you could even hit us up on our individual Facebook page from there. Yeah. Yeah. Big D Camper. Yep. Grump ass Mike. Grump ass Mike. Why do we call you Grump ass Grump ass Mike? You guys would call me Grumpy forever. I know. At you, work for years. Yeah. I was known as Grumpy. You're, well, yeah, you are kind of like Grumpy from the Seven Doors. Yeah, I can be. A little bit. Yeah. I was always happy inside. Yeah. I was smiling I inside. I was always happy inside. I was smiling inside. <laughs> it just came off gruff. You still do. I know. I know. Also, we got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, we read from and discussed the Wikipedia article on these two asshats to create this episode. Yeah. And uh, as always, we've included a link to that article in the description if you want to go check it out. Yep. You got anything, you know, we're getting ready to part ways for the week. Anything we forgot? Were we really going to part ways? Well, I meant like with our. Oh. I meant, I oh. meant with, with, with them. Uh, with them. Yeah. Uh, anything they need to know? Uh, shit. Other than save the date save for the date. September, September, September 18th for our uh, live. For live. Um, 
I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't think anything went on the error board. Let's check it. No. No. Nothing added. It's amazing. We're, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud. I'm still there at one. I got to slow it down, yeah. dude. I gotta, yeah, yeah, you got to. <laughs> Yeah, you got to host more often. I guess. It's been, no, it, it's, it, when you host, you screw up. I love it. There's a there was a reason to the yeah. rhyme here, or yeah. rhyme to the reason. Right, to the I, reason. I'm yeah. a moron. I messed that up. Yeah. All right. Well, we will uh, thank you guys again for tuning in, as always, and we will see you next Wednesday. Yep. See you guys. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks.